Welcome back. You're watching To The Point. Until this evening, Leela Sampson's letter of resignation dated the 15th of January was not public. But I now have a copy of it and the letter gives many reasons why she resigned which have so far not been revealed. A second fact that's also unknown is that this is her second letter of resignation. The first was in September when Prakash Javdekar was the INB minister. With me tonight to reveal and discuss the real reasons behind her resignation and how she responds to the criticism levelled against her by Arun Jaitley is the former chairperson of the censor board, Leela Sampson. Ms. Sampson, although you finally resigned on the 15th of January this year, you first tendered your resignation on the 4th of September last year when you submitted it to Prakash Javdekar, who was then INB minister. So is it the case that you've been wanting to resign for at least four months if not longer. That's true. Uh, I felt that, uh, you know, it was as soon as the new minister was in place that it would be time for me to offer him my resignation. And also a certain very deep uh, disillusionment with the processes of certification caused me to offer him my resignation. Now, in fact, your letter of resignation dated the 15th of January, a copy of which is with me, and I'll hold it up so that the audience can see it. Here it is. Lists many reasons why you chose to resign. I want to go through some of them with you one by one. First, you write, and I'm quoting, on an everyday basis, our officers are being coerced to do the bidding of the ministry or accede to the request of one or another minister from the center or from the states to either pass a film, reject it, or give it a particular certification irrespective of its content. I take it this sort of coercion, this sort of pressure has been happening both under the NDA as well as the previous UPA government and presumably there was more of it under the UPA because the UPA was there for longer. That's right. You're absolutely right. Uh, in fact, our problems began uh, when uh, Manish Tiwari took over as uh, minister. There was a certain antagonism. I don't think he appreciated the value of the board. Uh, we were a very enthusiastic board. We came from a cross-section of society uh, with different skills and we were really keen to see that uh, we could change the fabric of uh, the working of CPFC. However, uh, he undermined our uh, efforts and uh, uh, we had a very, very tough time uh, during that period. Now, in fact, in your first letter of resignation, the one that you gave to Prakash Javjekar on the 4th of September, you said this of Manish Tiwari, and I'm quoting again. It is regrettable that the previous minister humiliated the board, the CEO and me, and placed such persons on the board who systematically vitiated our functioning. And then you add, there was a downslide from then on. Give me some examples of the sort of rude, humiliating things Mr. Tiwari did, and some examples of the manner in which he placed the wrong people, thus damaging the board. Well, uh, he has every right to place people whom he likes uh, on the board. However, he brought in uh, individuals like Mr. Chandra Mukhe Sharma, uh, Asim Kayasthi, people who uh, wanted to in some way hurt or humiliate. For instance, in the certification of the film Sada Haq, uh, it was, uh, they, they threatened to, uh, you know, actually uh, bring harm to the CEO and to another lady member of the board uh, only because they did what they think thought was right by the film. They did not want it passed. This kind of, it's more than coercion, it's threat. And are you suggesting that Mr. Tevari was himself personally doing it or getting it done? They said that they would, they threatened them because they said they were his personal friends. And they did it. So these were people... They pe got uh, rid of the CEO. These were people claiming to be the minister's personal friends and threatening physical they harm. Were. Absolutely. You also say that Mr. Tiwari humiliated the board, the CEO and you. In other words, he was rude he in his behavior. Yes, he didn't come to the uh, meetings. He actually appointed, uh, he actually announced the name of a 
another chairperson while I was still chairperson. And uh, that eminent gentleman, whom I know very well, called me and said, I've been offered your job. I said, all luck to you. <laughs> but you weren't aware of but, this happening. Uh, this was happening behind your back without your being made aware of it. No, they, they, it was known. Many people were talking about it. But at no point uh, did the but minister... But that's not the point. The point was that the board had very legitimate uh, points of offering and wanted to do them, wanted to execute all these uh, uh, changes and reforms. However, we had no support from the ministry. Let's come to the present government. Did this government, with Mr. Arun Jaitley now as INB minister and Mr. Rathore as his minister of state, did they put any pressure on you or on anyone else on the board to clear messenger of God? No. In fact, uh, uh, they have not, you know, I would say that they haven't interfered at all in our functioning. However, when you talk of pressure, then I must tell you that there are different forms of pressure and one of them is when you break down systems that are already in place. When you, uh, when officers in the, uh, especially junior officers in the organization are called up on a daily basis and asked to either change the certification from UA to U or when ministers call uh, ROs or CO or the chairperson, uh, when uh, uh, producers call to ask uh, if they can bribe you for uh, you know doing the same thing these are very uh, this is all very uh, it affects the entire fabric of uh, one's intent absolutely can i ask you a pointed question and there are you suggesting that nda ministers mr jaitley and mr rathore were themselves calling up or they were getting officials to call up to get certification changed or to get things done or contacting junior officials and bypassing senior ones like you I, I would I would not know that because I have no uh, you know direct they've never they've never called me or asked me to do something or uh, but I know that the, the the officers were under pressure not from them from other officers in the ministry perhaps or from okay. uh, as I said members of parliament uh, both from the uh, center and from ministers in the state we've always had and this is not now it's always been there. Now, I'm going back to your letter of the 15th of January, which is the letter which actually made your resignation effective and which was eventually accepted. You say in that letter, no board meeting has been held in nine months and lack of funds has been cited as a reason. In his response yes. on his blog, Arun Jaitley says, and I'm quoting Arun Jaitley, the meetings are to be convened not by the minister or the secretary, but by the chairperson. Is Mr. Jaitley right in saying that you are the convening authority and you fail to convene meetings? I can only ask Karan for a meeting. Uh, the CEO has all financial powers vested in him. Only he can call for a meeting because it costs money to call for a meeting. You have to bring all the members to a single point of, uh, uh, of meeting and uh, uh, all the logistics involved with them are handled by a CEO. And is it the I want to also mention that Can there hasn't been a CEO in place. Even now, he's on additional charge, Mr. Shravan Kumar. Before him, the people people thought of Rakesh Kumar as the CEO. He wasn't. He was taking the place of an RO. Okay. When he was arrested, he was RO Bombay. I understand. Let's come back to these meetings because that's a critical point of difference between you and Mr. Jaitley. Are you saying to me that you right. asked for meetings? But the CEO yes. or the acting CEO refused to agree to your request for meetings. Yeah, he would avoid the situation or say to me that there, in fact, once he did say that there was no, there, there aren't any funds to hold the meeting. Now, on that too, Mr. Jaitley has differed with you. You claim that shortage of funds was cited as a reason for meetings not happening. You just said that a moment ago again. But Mr. Jaitley on his blog says, and I'm quoting, Funds for the censor board have been returned to the ministry as unspent by the board. What sort of funds were returned and were these funds meant for holding meetings or were they meant for something else? At the moment, uh, uh, Karan, the entire CBFC's uh, efforts are only uh, involved in actually certifying films because we have so many films coming to us and uh, there's no time for any other work. The main amount of money that should have been used should have been used for meetings 
Uh, four meetings this year have not been held. We had a training program in place for all panel members across the country. That training program never progressed. Uh, there's an entire computerization program which would have you know, encouraged an e-governance or an e-online e okay. uh, application system, which would have made everything absolutely, so can, uh, you know, can, can, I, can I stop you there? Uh, I, are you suggesting yeah. that the funds that were returned were not funds yes. meant for meetings, they were funds meant for other purposes? And therefore, when Mr. Jaitley says funds were returned, those are not funds for meetings at all. He's getting mixed up. Is that what you're saying? I, I'm saying that funds are being returned because they haven't been used. We have no infrastructure. For instance, you cannot view a film in any of the offices in the regions across the country. So when meeting... You should have a, a large screen where you can view it in-house. So it's when not the, uh, possible. So when the CEO said to you that there were no funds to hold meetings, could you not have said to him, funds are being returned which were meant for other purposes. Now that they are returned, use them to hold meetings. Could you not have said that to him? I could have said it to him, uh, but I must admit here that the uh, as long as the previous uh, additional secretary was there in the ministry, he's not there now. The director of films was there, she's not there now. As long as they were there, it was impossible to directly uh, confront the CEO. He was he reported in directly to them. He never paid reference to me at all. Uh, very minimally and that was always for a revision committee where the chairperson's permission is required. So in fact you had a very difficult relationship with the CEO. You make that another point in your letter of the 15th of January. You say his attitude is objectionable. He runs the organization without reference to the chairperson or the ethos of the organization. So your problem about meetings not being held and your desire to hold them was overlaid by the objectionable attitude of the CEO and the fact that he wouldn't respond to you? I, I'd say this, that Mr. Shavan Kumar is a very, uh, you know, very bright uh, officer of the, of the CADA. He runs the children's film. And I had great expectations because when he first came, he was very positive in okay. all the things that had to be done. However, over a period of time, I could see that he knew I was on call to be uh, put away and a new chairperson. It's the ambiguity that the ministry caused happen uh, so that all officials, industry, everybody knew that we were just on, on a temporary basis there. Now this this uh, didn't give us the power to actually, you know, do what we wanted to do. Now all of this, of course, added to your frustration and that's one of the great motives behind your resignation. But there's another aspect of your letter of the 15th that I want to raise. You say that your term as well as the terms of the other members of the CBFC were extended without asking for or obtaining your consent. You say you were simply Absolutely. notified when the CEO sent an office note. And in fact, in your case, you didn't even receive that office note in writing. Your secretary was rung up and it was communicated over the phone to her. I believe I'm right in saying even up till today, that written That's note it. has not reached you. So in these circumstances, with your frustration building up, the CEO being unresponsive, your request for meetings being ignored, and this is a history that goes back into the days of the UPA as well. Why in these circumstances, when they extended you, did you not simply put your foot down and say, no, I will not be extended? Why did you simply say, sorry, I've had enough, I will not be extended? I said it again and again, and I was hoping that they would change the chairperson and the, reconstitute the board. However, I don't know why they didn't. We were all we were all asked to be, you know, uh, to be retained for I don't know what reason. Perhaps they didn't have the time. And I'd I'd like to say this that I think uh, CPFC is seen as a very non inconsequential organization. Okay. Uh, in actual fact, without it, the entire film industry and the entire production of films, there's a there's a piece missing from the entire uh, Absolutely. process. You're, you're saying you cannot you. You're saying something very important. Yeah. You're saying you repeatedly said you didn't want to be extended. They wouldn't hear. They wouldn't listen. And they, in a sense, just bulldozed you to continue. Now, I'm going to go back to your letter of the 15th and quote. On several occasions, I have placed before the ministers, Mr. Manish Tiwari, Mr. Javdekar, and Minister of State, Mr. Rathor, the problems we were facing. I have yet to receive so much as an acknowledgement 
from anyone in response. Now when Mr. Jaitley in his blog says that at no point was either he or Mr. Rathor communicating with a member of the censor board, you're saying to me, he's wrong. You were in touch with Mr. Rathor, Mr. Jaitley in saying no such contact was made is simply wrong. I had no contact with Mr. Jaitley, but I certainly did correspond twice on two occasions with Mr. Rathor and placed before him some of the problems that we were facing, hoping that his interest, uh, I could at least place before him some of the things that had happened in the past. One of the problems is when people keep changing. Mr. Javadekar was very, very positive in his response to me initially, and that's why he put on hold my resignation because he said, you know, uh, let's sort things out. Then when Mr. Rathor came, he, he asked for information, I gave it to him. Uh, they have a right to change the board. They should have constituted it six months ago. But you know, the important point here is you were twice in communication with Mr. Rathor, which clearly proves, yes. which clearly proves that Mr. Jaitley is wrong when he says at no point have either he or Mr. Rathor communicated with any member of the censor board. Clearly, Mr. Rathor communicated with you not once but twice. Yeah, I think he's, you know, as finance minister, he must be terribly uh, involved in uh, the work of that. These, these ministries are secondary in ministries and subjects like ours, like the arts, culture, these are very, very low on the profile of uh, any government's uh, priorities. Okay. In, this it, is the tragedy of the situation. Quite right. As you're saying or suggesting or hinting, this was not a priority ministry for Mr. Jaitley. Thus, he made a comment which is clearly a factually wrong comment about no minister being in contact with you or in communication with you. Now, I want to raise something else. In his response to you on his blog, Arun Jaitley writes, and I'm quoting, I only wish the fact of corruption had been communicated even once by the chairperson of the censor board to me. And then he adds, the non-functional chairperson never did so. But actually, neither your letter of resignation dated the 15th of January, nor the letter sent subsequently by eight other members of the censor board, even mentions the word corruption. So at best, Mr. Jaitley must be referring to a comment you made to the media. So can you explain, when in your comment to the media you talked about corruption, what sort of corruption did you have in mind? Because that's not in your resignation letter. Uh, Karan, there are many forms of corruption. Uh, for instance, let's take the example of a panel member. Across the country, there are panel members we brought to the notice in 2013. The police reported to the then CEO Pankaja Thakur about the case of one Mr. Satish Kalyankar who had uh, accepted cash for, in promise of uh, posts that he could give the people. That same person was uh, found visiting the sets of uh, films. He was offering to clear films. He was breaking the confidentiality clause of examining committees by telling the producer of his presence at the, at the, uh, at the viewing uh, and said that he was a BJP party and he could, a uh, party member and he could handle things. This is a, as far as a, a panel members concerned. Look at this case of corruption. The Chennai government, uh, Tamil Nadu government gives 30% rebate on any film that is a certified as U. But does not say that if there is violence it cannot be a U. So every film, uh, there are bribes offered just to reduce something from an A to a UA or from a UA to a U. Because ultimately okay. everybody wants the 30%. So there are shades of uh, so there are shades corruption. of corruption and types of corruption happening at all levels. Is that correct? That's right. Now I want to put two more specific questions to you. Your resignation happened almost immediately after the film appellate tribunal overturned the CBFC decision not to clear Messenger of God. Was your resignation, as both this government and large sections of the media assume, a direct result and connected by that decision by the appellate tribunal or is it just coincidental that the two happened at the same time? It just coincidence. I, I have not seen MSG, I did not see PK, I have not seen, I didn't see Delhi Belly or Dirty Picture or Arakshan or Vishwarupam. All these very problematic films were never seen by me or any of our board members except when it came to a point when there was eruption either by 
uh, faction that was related to a religious group or an, a political ideology or uh, any other party that was offended. As far as MSG is concerned, I didn't even know the content of the film. So Suddenly there was a kind of rushing through inordinate speed with which both the viewing and the reviewing was done. Uh, I, I could feel that by officials in Bombay, the RO was under pressure. And uh, overnight, the appellate had also uh, passed it uh, and overturned the decision. The appellate tribunal has done that before, so I'm not surprised at that at all. They have every right to defend the director or producer in spite of the opinion of CBFC. After all, the CBFC panel okay. members are not always informed people. Can I put this so, to you? Uh, they have a right to overturn it. What? I have no problem with MSG. So am I right? It just to... happened that I had reached reached the end of my uh, patience with uh, different forms of uh, can despondency I... and corruption. Can I sum up the, the MSG situation as follows and correct me if I'm right or wrong? You're slightly yeah. surprised by the speed with which the appellate stepped in and cleared it. It happened literally overnight. But that is not the reason why you resigned. No. All right. I, I was, I can say this, that the RO who has to be present from CBFC side, uh, the Delhi RO is at, on additional charge. He's from another department. He doesn't know anything about the CBFC uh, working. So it came as a little surprise that uh, somebody who has no uh, background in this was suddenly asked to sit on it. Things like that. These are okay. you know, little things that irk you ultimately and you say, okay, I can't do this anymore. This is it. But as you said, and clearly, your resignation happen. is not motivated by the fate and fortune not of MSG. Happen. And both the government and the press are wrong when they've connected the two. Just say yes or no to Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Now, finally, yes. finally, what looks like the conclusion that you've reached in your resignation letter of the 15th of January is the following sentence. The decline of a legitimate autonomous body like the CBFC set up by the government of India is alas now complete. Who do you believe has the greater share of responsibility and blame for that decline? The UPA or the NDA? I wouldn't like to uh, place uh, the blame on anybody. I think it's a, it's a malaise that engulfs all of us in our country at different levels by different sectors of people. And uh, as far as the political groups are concerned, bureaucracy is concerned, people like us who have volunteered to give our time to uh, work that brings us no gain. And most of all, Karan, there are officials who are working overtime, 24 hours a day. There are people who watch six films a day. There's nothing, no reprieve for them, not even additional people put in place. This is what is criminal. Are you confident? I know a new chairman has been appointed this evening. Are you confident that with a new chairperson and a new government, the situation for the CBFC will change and change as you have often said it needs to? Or are you full of doubt and reservation? Well, I offer them my, you know, hopes that they will pick up cudgels and really work this thing. Uh, through, but what they'll need is to be, uh, you know, have the complete support of the ministry that appoints them. You cannot do it without uh, the support of the ministry, and the ministry on their hand should uh, stay away from the working of it ultimately. Uh, and don't, uh, don't gag the film industry. Let them, let them do what they have to do. So in a nutshell, your advice to Arun Jaitley is give the CBFC the importance it deserves and hasn't been given by the predecessor government. And secondly, don't interfere. Let it get on with its job autonomously. Absolutely. And bring in the new bill. The bill is ready. All right. Thank you very much, Leela Sampson, for speaking to me, for revealing details of your real resignation and for answering those charges leveled against you by Arun Jaitley and in particular pointing out that you have been in touch with Mr. Rathor, and that Mr. Jaitley is wrong when he says at no point have either he or his deputy been in communication with any member of the censor board. And there we end this particular episode. If you have been, thanks for watching. Goodbye.